And as they're walking before that throne of sinners and saints alike, they're going to start hearing, holy, 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 blessed. And they're going to be, wait a second, what's, I've heard about this. I know that song. Name that tune. I know that song. The Bible talks to us about another thing that I find interesting about songs. And it is in the book of Ezekiel. I love the book of Ezekiel. Um, a lot of people wouldn't like Ezekiel if he's around today. Ezekiel was one of these hard preachers. He was one of these preachers that would tell people they better get in line and do what the Lord tells them to do. He was the mouthpiece of God because what he said really came from the Lord. And people didn't always like it. But I guess they liked how dynamic he was. They're like, boy, that's a good fire revival preacher. Have you ever heard those preachers? Have you seen those preachers? Have you been to those services? And the preacher's up there and he's preaching on sin and he's jumping up on top of the pew and he's he's slinging and he's spitting and he's waving his hands in the air and you're like, yeah, that's right, amen, preacher. And you're getting excited and you know, you know you've been to church when you're in a service like that and he's just getting on you and he's getting on everybody else. And the Bible tells us here in the book of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, in the 32nd verse, this is what God's saying about it. He says, And lo, you are unto them, he's telling Ezekiel, this is what you are unto them, as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play uh, well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do them not. He said, you're just like somebody that they go out to see a show. And that's what some people are with music. It just passes on by. It's good for the moment, isn't it? It just passes on by. And they just go out to see a show. I know a lot of people that go to churches for different reasons. I don't know why everybody goes to church. I just know the ones who have got up and said why they go to church. I've heard people say, I go to church because they treated my mama and daddy well and they were, uh, they were at their funeral, and they were always good to my family, and that's why I go to church. I know people who go to church because they say, I was raised in that church, and that's where I'm going to go until I die. So they just go out of habit. They're like the people that vote, and they say, I'm this party or that party, and that's how I'm voting. I don't care about the person or what they think about this or what they do about this or how good or how bad or how ugly they are. I'm just going to vote straight this way because that's what I've always done, and that's what I'm always going to do, and I'm consistent like that. God told him, he said, that you're like a lovely song. Not just a pretty song. Not just a well-written song. Not just a song with a good melody. But somebody that can really sing it well. And somebody that can really play it well. And it just sounds good to them. And there in the magic of the moment, everything is just great. But when they walk out of that church service, when they walk out on the street, they don't live what you preach. They'll amen They'll nod their heads, read the verses before. It says that they're the ones that said, hey, we're with you, we're on your side. You read about that a couple other times in the Bible, but we're not going to divert into there. We're on your side and we're with you. But they're not. Because after it's all said and done, and after it's over, and after everybody screamed, and after the last amen, it's not there. Do you know why? Because they're the type of person... That can sit back and that they can listen to Amazing Grace on Sunday. And then when they get home, they put in that old, dirty, nasty music. And that's not what they're listening to anymore. Because they have a different song in their heart. They have the complete counter-opposite of that in their heart. But that's okay for church. We need to have a song in our heart that lifts up the Lord and that glorifies Him. Because that's what we need to be all about. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. I told somebody before, I said that I am my music and my music is me. I love my music. People tell me, they say that I'm so enthused about my music that I make them enthused about my music. Um, when my uncle passed away in 1999, he was a great songwriter. He was just one of the most talented people you would ever want to meet in your entire life. And I couldn't write a song. Never could write a song. Couldn't write a song for anything. It was crummy. It just really was. I said, Lord, I said, I want that. And I started quoting the Bible because I know what the Bible says about it. And I was telling him about the talents and all that. And I said, and he's gone. I said, and moreover, he would want me to have that. And moreover, if you give me that, I will use that for you. 
And something happened right there. I felt the power and the glory of God come down in that room, just like the best Holy Ghost revival that you've ever been to you in your life or that you've ever heard of in your life. And something happened, and I wrote out the verse to a song, and it was absolutely great. And then it left. And I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on with this. And I tried, and I tried, and I kept writing, and things were, were kind of coming. And you know, just because God gives you an ability or a talent doesn't mean that you don't have to hone it. And you have to work that thing. Just because you have something in you, Brother Norris, to play the guitar, and you have something in you to play the guitar, you just didn't pick up a guitar one day, and magically you're just dancing your hands all over the strings of that guitar, but you have to work at that, and work at that, and work at that. Something is there. But you have to 